I've already had one round of code complaints where we confronted the social media question and they did not have enough votes to sanction me. So I'm hoping that that'll happen the same. But this is just kindergarten politics mm. where uh, I have politicians using the integrity commissioner for political purposes. And I just, it really upsets me because I'm not fighting for freedom of speech for me. I'm fighting it for, for you, yes. right? And the next politician, and the next politician, if we keep rolling back and saying, oh, you know, maybe, no, I didn't say anything wrong, so I'm not gonna apologize. What are your tax for if it isn't for this stuff? Yes. And so if once you take, take a look, hard look at the books and what they're doing downtown with it, it would shock you. It would absolutely shock you how the money is disappearing. The money is there, it's just misaligned. Edmonton is not the same without you. And this is, this is the whole point of the campaign. This isn't about me or Mike Nickel, it's about you. ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਟੈਲੀਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਉਮੀਦ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਸਾਡੀ ਮਨਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਫਿਰਮਨ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਪਿਆਰ ਅਦਬ ਅਤੇ ਸਤਿਕਾਰ ਭਰੀ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਸਲਾਮ ਨਮਸਤੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਐਡਮਿੰਟਰ ਡਾਈ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਦਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਦੋਸਤੋ 4 ਮਹੀਨਿਆਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਐਡਮਿੰਟਰ ਸ਼ਹਿਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮਿਊਨਿਸਪਲ ਚੋਣਾਂ ਹੋਣੀਆਂ ਹਨ 12 ਕਾਉਂਸਲ ਚੁਣੇ ਜਾਣਗੇ ਅਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਮੇਅਰ ਦੀ ਚੋਣ ਹੋਵੇਗੀ ਸਾਰੇ ਕੈਂਡੀਡੇਟ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਚੋਣ ਮੁਹਿੰਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਰੁੱਝ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਨੇ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਕਿ ਵੱਖ-ਵੱਖ ਕੈਂਡੀਡੇਟਸ ਚਾਹੇ ਉਹ ਕਾਉਂਸਲ ਦੇ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਇਲੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਲੜ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਜਾਂ ਮੇਅਰ ਦਾ ਇਲੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਲੜ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਰੂਬਰੂ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਵੇ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗੇ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਸ਼ਹਿਰ ਦੇ ਵਿਕਾਸ ਬਾਰੇ ਕਿਹੜਾ ਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਪਲਾਨ ਰੱਖਦੇ ਹਨ ਕੀ ਸੋਚਦੇ ਹਨ ਔਰ ਅੱਜ ਦੀ ਇਸ ਕੜੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਖਾਸ ਮਹਿਮਾਨ ਨੂੰ ਬੁਲਾਇਆ ਹੈ ਤਿੰਨ ਵਾਰ ਵਾਰਡ ਨੰਬਰ 11 ਤੋਂ ਉਹ ਕਾਉਂਸਲ ਰਹਿ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਨੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਬਿਬਾਕ ਅਤੇ ਨਿਡਰ ਨੇਤਾ ਹਨ ਆਓ ਜੀ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਮੁਲਾਕਾਤ ਕਰਾਉਣੇ ਆ ਮਾਈਕ ਨਿਕਲ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ Mr Mike Nickel you are most welcome to my show thank you for having me it's fantastic and uh, uh, i would like to start this program with your brief introduction who is mike nickel oh you know what i'm i always tell i'm nobody special uh, my dad came over here in the 50s german and uh, started a masonry company and uh, grew it and we went through very much the boom and bust here from the 50s on forward uh my brother and I took over the companies in 1990 89 1990 and I did mostly marble granite uh masonry and tile hmm. and I went to university got a master's degree in political science and all that but uh, I was student union president but I still went back into business because my father always taught me that if you want to really get ahead you got to you got to be in business And so uh over the years we uh I was the first guy selling granite countertops here in the city and uh and then um you know what we were very successful and so we I retired in 2007 mm. uh but before that I did a stint on council between 2003 2004 to 2007 uh left and then came back in 2013 was never planning on coming back uh so I uh, came back and now i've done two terms and i believe in term limits so two terms is enough for any politician in my opinion so uh i made the decision with my wife we were going to i was going to leave go back to my my retirement or i could run for mayor cuz and i decided to run for mayor cuz we have a lot of problems that's kind of it in a nutshell and when i was searching your profile i found that you have master in political science yes yeah and i i do have a uh, same degree back home so i think this is very much similarity between us and our talk will be very interesting one of the things i did in political science that was different from from a lot of folks is i did a lot of statistics yes a lot of math uh and i really you know the funny part is and i and i tell everyone this is that you never know where you're going to end up because in high school i was terrible at mathematics hmm. awful and then my second year of university i found a love for it and I, i just it just took off and so i love numbers i'm not so great at language but i can do a, i think i'm okay with math <laughs> okay <laughs> and if i'm not wrong you contested for mayorship in 1998 and 2011 as well that is correct that's uh that's a long time ago and uh Oh my goodness those were different times and uh they were good learning experiences and uh, so at the end of the day 
Uh, the first time I came second, then we had 9-11, and so mm. no campaigns were going at that point. And uh, it was really good. I've really enjoyed it. I've always thought that if you do well, that you have a responsibility to give back. Yes. So now, as you already mentioned, like you remained counselor for three terms. Yes, 2004 and seven, then left. And uh, in between that time, we did a lot of business in India, China, oh. South America, because mm. uh, we were doing this, a lot of stonework and mm. we were offshoring quite a bit of our work. So I have quite a bit of experience with Asia. Uh, I would do the China run and my brother would do the India run quite a bit. We spent a lot of time around Jaipur and uh, this up because of the stone, stone business. Wow. So now my question is, during those three terms, what were your achievements? What is your report card and why Edmontonians should elect you as a mayor? Well, we can, we can take it from the, the small to the large. At yeah. uh, the small end, I'm, a, I'm an incessant person who believes in the average constituent. I love door knocking and I love solving problems. So if you go and talk to my constituents, uh, a lot of the small stuff they would look at and say, I will take care of it. I return phone calls. Right, be it a, from repairing a pothole to all the way up to bigger files. Right now, I'm, I'm very frustrated because I'm pu pushing through building permits through the city because the, we have so much red tape. But on the larger side, I guess if you want to talk about a couple of the big things, uh, number one, I was the guy who led a lot of the, the drainage uh, funding for the repair of Mill Woods. Mill Woods was going underwater, right? We're actually on a swamp. Our mm. farm used to be where the Grain on Hospital sits. That's where I grew up. And I went to Edith Rogers, I went to Grace Martin, I went to Scona. So I have a long history here of addressing these, uh, these problems. And then, and then I'm always fighting for more common sense at City Hall about reducing taxes, about cutting the red tape. I do that over and over and over again. And so there's other things that I've introduced that people don't know about, like the cannabis bylaw. I, it's legal. I brought the cannabis bylaw forward. I think we can do business on that. Uh, and then it goes from a whole range of introducing various programs like I, I, a lot of people don't know from the small stuff. I brought back urban beekeeping to the city because my open home were big into beekeeping. But you see, you go from the small to the billion dollar project and lots in between. So mm. I personally don't like to brag a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> it kind of makes me uncomfortable. But judge me on what I, what I do. Go look at my record. Go look at my website. And I think you'll find uh, I think I find I passed the grade there. No, I have gone through your uh, uh, website. There are lots of information and we will talk about each and every uh, point mm -hmm. one by one. So yesterday was the uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, recently uh, in Kamloops what happened, right? Yes. Two 15 children, their remains were found there. And I believe there are lots of other locations where that kind of uh, possibilities are there. Right. And my question is racism, vandalism, Haterness, this is rapidly increasing in our city. So as a mayor, if you are elected, what will be your action plan to uh, handle this issue and how we can have the society which is based on harmony, peace, co coordination, yeah. you know? The, fir the first step is you don't run away from your problems. You got to call it out. When yes. you see it, you call it up, call it out and you stand and say, this is unacceptable behavior. Mm -hmm. And so it, that's the first step. But at the end of the day, hmm. what we've had over and over and over, which frustrates me to no end, is we have lots of virtue signaling. We have lots of chat about, you know, the, the guys who wave the flag and nothing seems to change. Nothing seems to, uh, nothing seems to move. I'm very different. I, for example, let's talk about the homeless population. We're talking about indigenous communities. We have to confront why. Why do we have a disproportionate, disproportionate population of our indigenous community in the prisons? Why do we have a disproportionate people in our homeless populations? Trauma, treatment, addiction. We need specific programs that mechanically will deal with these people, uh, these folks, and their issues that are around them. Bigotry happens all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's not just here. It's not just, but it, uh, it's not just Edmonton. It's not just Canada. It's not, it's, you know, in India, and you go to, it's everywhere. So one of the first things we have to talk about is don't bring American style politics up to Edmonton. Hmm. That's not what we're about. If you can, Mill Woods is a living example of how we confront racism every day. Yes. I, I, I get a kick out of people saying that Mill Woods needs more diversity. 
Hmm. The middle words needs more inclusion. And I yes. just go like, you, already have you, diversity. You're, you're, you look around. Yeah. And the best way that we found here in Mill Woods is opportunity. People need jobs. People need employment. And then when those issues do come up, when people are being discriminated against, right, that's when you confront them. The best solution I've always found to dealing with uh, uh, the, a lot of ills for society is a quality of opportunity. That's what we need to guarantee. And that's not just about uh, race, a specific community, and it has to be equality for everyone, and we have to practice it. And that means we have to apply it, and that's when we have to confront it. So what I talk about on my website, I talk about how to deal with the homeless population, and it's very much you're going to have to deal with those cultural files. But you don't bury them. You don't mm -hmm. say, well, this group is more important than another group. We all have to deal with it. We all have to find solutions for it, and that's where equality comes comes first. Yeah. But I believe, like education, can play a very important role, and especially moral education. Oh, in I wouldn't. This. I wouldn't. I wouldn't disagree with any of that. Mm -hmm. But let's 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 be let's be honest about this. Mm -hmm. We we we're going to continue with the education. But if you do not follow it up with some opportunity for these people to move forward or move up through society, yes. right? Uh, through, uh, then it's pointless. They're just going to be trapped. And if so, I believe in equality of opportunity. Some people believe in equality of right, and I think there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, I have people down here in Millwoods who've lived here for 50 years, 50 years, and then some. Does that, you know, and so you ask them the question, uh, do you feel that, uh, do you feel Canadian? Do you feel discriminated against? And I find lots of people here in Millwoods don't look into themselves as victims but they seek opportunities, mm -hmm. right? Seek opportunities to better themselves. And that's where we have to start creating it to be uh, out of the gate. Yeah. So Mr. Mike, you might have uh, noticed like Edmonton is growing continuously. We have lots of uh, like new immigrants or people moving from the other provinces, like population is increasing. But we have the same infrastructure, same roads and LRTs all, uh, all are under uh, construction. You have uh, talked about, I know about these all LRTs. Oh, LRT. Uh, but, but I've look found in my like, eyes, yeah. LRT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the city of Edmonton, okay, let's, let's start with the basic question, where are your taxes going, yes. right? And if they're not going for basic infrastructure, services, and so on, you have to ask the question, where's your money disappearing? Mm -hmm. I talk quite a bit about how the system is being gained against us average Edmontonians by special interests downtown. And as you know, we talked about this a little earlier, I'm not the bike lane guy. I'm mm -hmm. not the funicular guy. I'm not the gondola guy. I'm not the picnic tables on Jasper Ave guy, okay? we need to be refocusing our priorities and they are in core services and fixing our capital programs. Uh, and this is where I've been quite successful with regards to my campaign is that I brought labor, labor and business for the first time, I think in a generation, are on the same page. Organized labor can't get anything done because we have too much management. Business is saying, I can't get anything done, I've got too much red tape. The real reason is, is that we're top heavy. You reduce the consultants. If you reduce, uh, you reduce uh, the red tape. If you reduce the necessity of two layers of middle management, we could be saving fifty million dollars plus annually. And we haven't even touched the capital programs yet, mm -hmm. which are way uh, are just out of control. Mm -hmm. That fifty, that fifty million is is for tax reductions for everybody, not just some guys downtown like downtown developers who are getting twenty-four million dollars to build more condos. I'm not into that. I want tax relief for everybody. Ties into my point. They got, we have to be, we have to have equality for everyone, and and then we can talk about reinvesting in frontline services like cutting the grass, like redoing the roads, snow removal, snow removal. You know, you notice we're not even doing the basics anymore. We've gone backwards, and that's what's so frustrating. Is but you hear downtown everything's okay. No, it's not okay. Yes. We got to change. Okay, so my another question is, you gave one statement, how you, like you will make Edmonton economic engine of Canada. So can you elaborate what's your action plan or what do you have like vision for that? Well, we, we come this fall, we have a number of policy planks that we're going to roll out. Uh, particularly, we're dealing with right out of the gate, we have structural problems with regards to our taxes. We're, we're not competitive with the region. We have problems with permitting. We're not fast enough. 
A matter of fact, I would argue we have a very business un uh, unfriendly business administration and council. They don't seem to understand government does not generate wealth, it distributes wealth. We generate the wealth, we create the jobs, we make it happen, and I honestly believe we have just too much city hall in our lives. It's just, that's straight up. So once we fix that, then we go out and start addressing the question of the industrial problem that we've, we've been deindustrializing for a while. Commercial properties are under stress. Again, moving out to the region, got to bring the gravity back. But at the end of the day, so we have some specific ideas for that, sector specific, how we want to grow those things. But at the end of the day, I think what has to be done, and I say this to all business and labor leaders, we have to go out and hunt for business. And that has not happened for quite some time, is going out, bringing deals to the city, and then making them happen. I guess I've been in business for a while, and it takes, at this point, it takes a champion. We just, I'm the mayor who's gonna go out there, drag in the business, they bring opportunities to this desk, I will, I'll push them forward. And we have to move, and we have to move fast, because we have tens of thousands of people unemployed. High, probably the highest youth unemployment in the nation, I believe. I, I could be corrected on that. It's gotta stop. Hmm. So uh, we have very crucial points to discuss about the city administration, but now is the time of break. Hmm. We will continue after that. So you keep watching Punjabi National TV. We will be back shortly. Welcome back to the show, Edmonton Diary. And we have a great guest with us, Mr. Mike Nickel. Thank you very so much welcome for back having me. Super. And, uh, uh, you know, there's an integrity commission in uh, council. They're not happy with Mr. Mike Mickel. No, they're not. And uh, so, we're, it's so absurd. It just, I just sh start shaking my head. So basically what the new code complaint is, mm -hmm. is that the mayor feels that, and the integrity commissioner feels, in my opinion, they have the right to come edit my mayor campaign. They have mm -hmm. a right to come edit my personal Facebook pages and Twitter, what mm. I say on Twitter. And I say, no, you don't get to do that. It's called freedom of speech. You have freedom of speech. I have freedom of speech. Yeah. Uh, but they feel they can regulate that. And obviously, I've put out my opinion on issues that they don't like. And uh, now we're up to these absurd code complaints. Uh, pure politics, pure fabrication. I'll say it point blank. I'm not convinced my integrity commissioner has that much integrity given that she investigates me hmm. and then there's other complaints out there that are not being investigated and so this will all come out hopefully this this week this Thursday uh, I've already had one round of code complaints where we confronted the social media question and they did not have enough votes to sanction me so I'm hoping that that'll, that'll happen the same but this is just this is just kindergarten politics hmm. where uh, I have politicians using the integrity commissioner for political purposes. And I just, it really upsets me because I'm not fighting for freedom of speech for me. I'm fighting it for, for you, yes. right? And the next politician, and the next politician, if we keep rolling back and saying, oh, you know, maybe, no, I didn't say anything wrong, so I'm not gonna apologize. Okay, so, you know, uh, say, like e-scooters, this is very personal concern for me. Yes, yes. I, you I, don't I, like e-scooters. Yes, I, I raised this question like uh, on many platforms for many times, but no concrete solution has been made. What do you think? I think with e-scooters and the question of safety, you're absolutely right. It starts with, uh, first of all, it starts with enforcement. Yep. Uh, people who drive and uh, cars, e-scooters, bicycles, it could be whatever, mm -hmm. a go-kart. If you're driving in an irresponsible manner, you should get a ticket. You should be pulled over. And then there's a question of whether or not, you know, because I've seen them whipping down the sidewalk and I'm going like, this is not going to work. So if you're not going to operate, if the operators are not going to try to inf have operators at a certain standard that's acceptable, they should go. Yeah, safety is a big concern. Yeah, I've, I've, got, I've had a number of constituents just tell me I've almost got run over I've all, and I've been hit and so on. So um, it starts with enforcement and, and then it back to education. Just be respectful. Just yes. think about the people on the street. But mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's frustrating, right? I know. And uh, you know, my next uh, point is photo radar system. I hate photo radar. Nobody like it. Actually. I hate photo radar. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's just a license for rich people to speed. Yes. Given that they can't prove the driver and the car are the same person, there are no demerits that can be issued. Hmm. 
so it's not a long-term fix. So the more money you have, you know, the more tickets you can absorb. I call it a poor man's uh, or poor person's tax. And cash cow. Cash cow. And, it's, and if you really want to slow down people from speeding, we need to work on those flashing signs yes. to warn people before the intersection. And we need to... Uh, and we flashing have... signs should be with numbers, I believe. Correct. That's, that's more... Correct. So people yeah. are aware. And then you also need on the other side, police or peace officers giving you demerits. And I, I think I'm very, I'm supported by this because the province is looking and they've done a long-term study on photo radar to show that it's had a negligible effect in the long term. So it's a tool, it's a tax that, it, uh, that I feel isn't working and it's got to go. Do you think we need some police reforms? Uh, yes. And not, no one, uh, no organization or no person. It's my father always taught me it cannot go without improvement. Continuous yeah. improvement is very much in a, my mindset. But let's start with uh, defund the police. Yes. I did not support in defunding the police. I think it's absurd when people are calling, we have enough problems getting the police to show up to the calls. Now you want to have less police to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the answer. But then conversely though, I think there's a lot of people in their 20s that the police don't have a good relationship with and they got to work on that. It's called the little customer service. And we've all had those experiences, right? And so uh, at the end of the day, what we do need is more police, stabilize the situation. I believe putting in community policing back in our neighborhoods, uh, I'm a firm believer in that, and putting the m my money where my mouth is. If you, don't have, uh, if you don't have security, you can't have a marketplace. That means you can't run your business. You can't run your business, you don't pay taxes. That's just That's how it works. You know, lots of big uh, builders, we talk about big guys, yep. they got big deals. But what about the common people? Like, you know, in this pandemic, everybody has to pay more property taxes than they were paying before. Yes. Despite the fact their property prices are got down. And so at the end of the day, we're all going backwards. And I knew that something was very wrong in the city when I had one of my major union presidents come to me and say, Mike, uh, this is our city workers. They offered to take uh, a couple of the unions, at least one, offered to take 0% wage increases, mm -hmm. zeros, if everybody got a 0% tax increase. So it's not about our frontline workers. Mm -hmm. It's about how much management we have, how badly we're being run, right? And how business unfriendly this jurisdiction has become. And it's to the breaking point. You and I both know seniors can't afford it anymore. I was just talking to one of my community le uh, leaders up in, in Ritchie, and he basically said, I have to downsize because of taxes. I have to move because of taxes. And think about on the business side, how much we have lost because of taxes. We, it's, we have more than enough cash if we manage it properly in the system. After 20 years of, percent, uh, 20 years of tax increases, enough's enough. And now it's time to roll that number back. Now I want to talk about taxi industry versus Uber. You know, in 2016, Edmonton was the very first city in Canada who legalized this or like yeah. made this bylaw, especially to allow Uber for share ride. Yes. They're calling it ride sharing program, right? So I consider like not taxi versus Uber. It is common people versus corporate. I think that's what it basically came down to. There was a business model that Uber wanted to throw into the city and I felt they wanted to come in here and they just said, we're going to do whatever we want to do. And okay, that's not how it works here in Edmonton. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, at the end of the day, everybody knows I fought for the taxi industry because they were fighting on an unlevel playing field. The insurance was not the same. The qualifications were not the same. And that took me a bit to straighten out. Now there was one of my competitors running for mayor, should have been at that vote. I'll point that out. But uh, I think that's well known amongst the taxi crew mm. <laughs> in my community. So we're at the point now where now we just don't want to talk about the taxi cab business. Uh, now we've got to talk about growing their business because they provide a unique and uh, a unique service. And I did put out a voucher program for, on, on a, for the taxi cabs and some other providers. And I think we can do better. And ride sharing is not going away. Uber is not going away. The taxi cab drivers all told, always told us they just want a level playing field. Yes. And once you got elected as a mayor, do you have any plan how you can make something like, like balanced approach for both? Well, 
I think we start we start very much out asking the question what the the, uh, the taxi cabs offer, and I think their customized their customized service and the relationship business that they're in. That's what their business model is. They know a lot of the people they pick up. Uh, I talked about bringing a, a voucher in for DATS, for mm. example. That where a per because we had I don't know if you know what DATS is. That's I know. a disabled. Uh, people for a disabled uh, adult transportation system. Yeah. DAS is under stress. They can't keep up. They, it's a milk run. They can't get to the people to their appointments. So bad, they're missing chemo appointments. Yeah. They're missing medical appointments. I said, you know what? What if we just offered them public choice between DATS and taxi cabs? Mm -hmm. And you have a voucher, yeah. right? And you get to pick your time when you need to go. You can customize your own solution. It's called public choice. Right now, there is no public choice on the DATS side. And this is where tax uses can come in. That's where I talk about, if you think about it, offer people a choice, I think they can more than compete and grow their business. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, red tapeism is a very big problem, especially when you go for permits, residential inspections, licenses for your businesses. There's like undue delays. So what will be your action plan to reduce this red tapeism so that people can avail these services without any delays. So for years, I've told this council, you have to measure what you do. It's not about process, you don't focus, but I have a council and, a, and it's not just this council, we have a lot of politicians that love to talk about process. They don't like talking about results. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're here where, where we are today. And so my answer is mandatory permit turn, turnaround times. You have a choice. You can fix the process and let the, revolt, the results vary, or you can fix the results and let the process vary. I'm fixing the results. Everybody meet those results because that's what we're going to track. If we want to be nimble and pro-business, we have to fix those results and let the process vary. And there's another problem uh, that is 311, City Services Customer Service Center. Yeah. So they have reduced the very essential services like from 24 hours to just 12 hours. Yeah, and it's and it's part of the, and it's not just 311, it's cutting grass, it's snow yes, removal, yes. just walk outside. We were talking about the, my administration now part of their cost saving strategy is hmm. it's called naturalization, which means we're going to cut less grass. Hmm. And and it just drives me nuts when I hear uh, politicians on my council say we, I'd rather subsidize e-bikes Hmm. then provide money for mosquito control, which they yes. tried to cut out, yeah. grass cutting, mm -hmm. and uh, we can, ha I, I just put money back to pull the weeds mm -hmm. in some of our city beds. And of course, I had the mayor and, and some others saying, this is not what we should do. And I'm going like, no, we need to re deliver. What are your taxes for if it isn't for this stuff? Yes. And so if once you take, take a look, hard look at the books and what they're doing downtown with it, it would shock you. It would absolutely shock you how the money is disappearing. The money is there. It's just misaligned. Yeah, we will talk about that too. Okay, so uh, on July 1st, Canada Day, mm. our province is entering into the third phase of reopening. And uh, our already like existing mayor, he said, we are not waiving this mask by law. So what's your opinion on that? And why you support uh, like taking away the mask? So, I've always said I'm not a virologist, I'm not a doctor, mm. I'm not the expert. We have to rely on the experts, even though politicians like to think they're clever, yeah. they're not, right? You got to listen to to the Dr. Hinshaw, Dr. Sikora. These are our medical experts because they understand the problem better than I do. Fine, give me my advice. And so initially I didn't support the mask bylaw because it was not mandated by the province. This is, a pr pr this is the province's job. This is not the guy who fills your potholes, fix your streets, cuts your grass and removes the snow and lowers your taxes. That's me. The other side though is, is that I've got some politicians here who want to uh, question what we get, medical advice we get. So just today, for example, uh, there was a motion put forward to suspend the mask bylaw in accordance with the province. The province says, we're going to suspend the mask bylaw. We've met our metrics, which I called for two years ago. I said, what does the exit look like? Now we met those metrics. And it passed uh, seven to six, uh, except with now, uh, so everything you thought should carry on. But unfortunately, we had one councillor uh, decided to fight it on third reading. And 
So at the end of the day now, that means we have to delay it past Canada Day, which is not what it's meant to be. So we're having a special meeting on Friday to make sure we get three meetings to suspend the mask bylaw. It should be suspended by then. But remember this, the mask bylaw is, is only one piece of it. Keep social distancing, keep washing your hands. If you're sick, stay home. Mm. Use some common sense, good Lord. And that's the mask is just one part of it. But I'm hearing counselors like the mask is the magic fix. It's not, we all have to use some common sense on this. And so I voted with, uh, I seconded, John Zydek moved the motion for counselor from Ward 3. And uh, I seconded the motion because it's time. Because that doctor said it, the do Dr. Hinch on the crew said it's okay. Now you'll still have to wear your mask on, on the bus, you know, in some places like that. But that's just good common sense too. But for businesses and for individuals, it's time. The mm. doctors have made the call, stick with your experts. Okay, my last question. That is regarding the mismanagement of resources. As you said, there are lots of resources, lots of money we have in the city, but that is not used properly. And there's a big list of the projects you mentioned in your website, like police campus budget, LRT metro uh, budget, then LRT valley line, Waterdale bridge. So there's so many projects. Yeah, just it's, it's broken. It is absolutely broken. So, you know, just so for everyone can understand, we have two sides of the budget. You have the operating budget, that's your day-to-day -day stuff, and then you build things, right? That's called, that's a capital budget. Yep. Now, on the building side, we spent, we're going to be spending about $9 billion over the next four years. And if you look at my website and you look at the litany of projects that are over budget, mm -hmm. out of time, they're over schedule, they're and and just just not getting not, done. Yeah. Right. You know, we take the police campus. I believe where we started yeah, at 30, I have that thirty-one million. Th thirty. Uh, yeah, around that. And then we ended up at hundred around one hundred and twenty. One hundred twenty million. And with yeah. a leaky roof, I mean, so two years we, still and and still going. Yeah. And so okay. I said, we got we to gotta fix this. And so what I called for is an establishment of an of a, uh, independent project management office. So we take the delivery of capital away from the administration and away from the bureaucrats and away from the politicians, right? Because you get scope creep and all those. I come from construction, right? Mm -hmm. And so what happens is, is that this, this independent group will deliver the service. They'll deal with specifications, permit, and so on. But they'll take a look at the budget and say, can we do it on time? Can we do it on budget? If not, they'll send it back to council. Yes. Right? And, and that is how we're going to fix it. And conservatively, I figure we can save 10 to 15% on every $100 million. Easy. That, I've talked to engineers. I've talked to people in the construction. I'm from the construction industry. Add that to $9 billion over four years. $900 million. So you tell me, can we find the cash? Yeah, we can find the cash. And uh, that doesn't mean you, that means don't raise taxes. Don't build West End LRT because we don't need it, right? And on and on it goes, so. Mr. Mike, in the end, if you want to add something or you want to convey some special message to the audience, please go ahead. First of all, I want, I want to thank you very much for the interview and I want to wish everyone a very happy Canada Day. Uh, Edmonton is not the same without you. And this is, this is the whole point of the campaign. This isn't about me or Mike Nickel. It's about you. And there's, this is about bringing a new team to Edmonton for the next 25 years. This is a once in a lifetime uh, election, once in a, a generation, let's put it that way. And this, if I get to be mayor, you cannot leave me. You have to come with me because right now we have to fix so much and I can't do it without you. So thank you very much for the opportunity and don't forget, it's about you. Mr. Nickel, I know a uh, campaign is going on. You are very busy in your schedule and you came specially to our studio to share your vision plan with our audience. Thanks a lot and good luck from us for your future. Thank you very much. Great questions. It was Thank fun. You. Thank really you very much. It. And you have a great day. You too. Thank you. So, Asanji, Mike Nickel, JDK, City of Edmonton, they which sitting councillor and or mayor de torte election ladan ja rahe बड़ी बेबाकी दे नाल वक्ख वक्ख मुद्द्यां दे उपर गलबात होई है आस कर दे हैं कि प्रोग्राम तहानू पसंद आया होवेगा ओन वाले एपिसोर्स दे विच कुछ होर शक्षी तो नाल तो हड़ी मुलाकात करामांगे तद तक मंजी सिंग नू दे उजाजत ते तुसी देख दे रहना पंजाबी नेक्शन टेलिविजन उम